Hello and welcome back. If you're gonna get out in the outdoors, uh, whether it's a day trip or an overnight trip or maybe a multi-day trip, but especially if you're gonna do a long distance hike, you might wanna consider recording your backpacking trip. Even if you don't plan on putting uh, your recording on social media, YouTube, whatever, uh, you might want to consider doing it and recording your trip uh, just for the sake of posterity, just for the sake of your uh, kids, grandkids, or anybody that's interested in watching it. So today I'm going to uh, spend some time and talk about how you can record your backpacking trip. When I was growing up, my dad had a, uh, I forgot what kind of camera it was, uh, but he had one of these uh, eight millimeter cameras and uh, he was always, whatever trip we took, uh, me and my brothers, uh, he would record us and uh, we used to love to get together, uh, family, get-togethers and we would pull out those old uh, eight millimeter uh, video recordings and we would watch ourselves and uh, especially when we had kids uh, we would uh, enjoy watching them and and watching the kids get a get a reaction out of uh, our recordings of our uh, trips to Disney World or wherever. Before I did my through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail, I had done several um, overnight hikes and uh, uh, two and three day hikes. I couldn't get out very long because I was pastoring a church and uh, I could only stay out for uh, just a couple of days and then I had to get back to uh, of the services that we had. Whenever I would take these uh, backpacking trips, uh, I would always record it somehow. I don't think that you need expensive camera equipment or recording equipment to record your hike. If you've got a if you've got a cell phone, if you've got a uh, some kind of smartphone, uh, you can use that. Use a camera on it. Uh, to do your recording and also use the camera for uh, other things. And so you don't have to take a big uh, camera with you. Now, if you're uh, just doing like a day trip or something, you can carry a big camera with you and, and uh, take some uh, phenomenal pictures. But I think you can, uh, now, I think you can get some fantastic pictures and fantastic videos uh, with your smartphone. So I wanna give you some things that I learned about recording uh, my journey, and hopefully there'll be a help to you. The first thing that I learned was to record in landscape mode. I see people all the time recording with their phone in a vertical position, and uh, when, when it gets played back, uh, it's got those black bars on each side of the recording and it makes it kind of uh, annoying to watch. So when you record something, make sure that you record it in landscape mode and not portrait mode. The next thing that I learned is uh, to tell a story when you're recording your journey. Now when I say tell a story, I'm not talking about verbalizing what you're doing, but show what you're doing. You don't have to verbalize that uh, I'm going down the trail or I'm climbing this mountain or I'm picking up a rock. You don't have to verbalize it. They can see it uh, through your video. The first thing every story has is a beginning. And so uh, start off your video with uh, perhaps maybe pulling up to the, uh, 
the trailhead or getting out of your car or the trip to uh, the trailhead to the trail. Start off with the beginning and then of course uh, the middle of your story is you going down the trail, uh, climbing up a mountain, uh, filling up your water bottle, uh, eating, uh, that, and that's included in, in, in the middle of your story. Then the ending could be you finding a campsite, setting up your tent, uh, perhaps maybe uh, eating dinner, and uh, turning in for the night. You may have to verbalize uh, some things uh, in your recording, uh, perhaps maybe uh, identifying a mountain that you're uh, looking at, a lake that you're looking at, or even perhaps maybe the beginning of your uh, recording, record uh, where you are and what you're about to do, what your plans are for that day, but make it short. And uh, I'm gonna mention that in just a little while. People don't want to see just random shots of a tree or a bird or something like that, uh, but they want to follow a story. And so tell a story, not necessarily verbalizing a story, but tell a story through your recording. Next thing, use a tripod. When I did my through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail, I carried a Joby Gorilla Pod mobile mini it's the smallest uh, tripod that i've ever seen i think it weighed only about an ounce but i would take my my camera my phone and set it up on uh, that tripod and either set it up on the on a rock or a limb or something stable and uh, i would record myself walking by or walking towards the camera, or just uh, set it up to get a stable shot of a lake or uh, a mountain or something like that. So use a tripod, uh, they're very, very helpful. When you're recording yourself, look at the lens and not the screen. I have seen so many people record like this and uh, they think that they're looking at the camera but actually they're looking at the screen find out where the lens is on your camera and look at that and not on the screen another important thing that i learned is record walk bys this is where your uh, tripod uh, comes in handy you can take your tripod and, like I said, put it on a rock or uh, some kind of surface uh, that's stable and uh, record yourself walking away from the camera and walk and record yourself walking towards the camera. Find a beautiful scene, beautiful landscape, and set your camera up uh, pointing towards that particular scene and then uh, just record your, and then, then start recording it, and then record yourself walking through that scene. Uh, people want to get some kind of perspective about how tall the mountains are, how blue the, uh, the lake is. And so by you walking through that scene, uh, not only uh, is it bringing uh, the human element and uh, uh, focus in your recording, uh, but it's also showing some perspective uh, about the scenery that you're recording. Next, use music in your video. If you watch a movie, uh, like during a, a sad scene or something like that, uh, you'll notice that the mu if you'll pay attention, if you'll notice that the music is, uh, very sad music and what it does is it kind of adds to the emotion uh, that you're not only seeing but you're also hearing and so there's different uh, um, senses that are at play here you're not only seeing a sad scene but you're also hearing music that uh, invokes uh, sadness or whatever now there are several websites 
Uh, in fact, uh, I use a website and I'll put the link to it down below in the description area, but there are several websites that you can download uh, music that is not copyrighted. And by all means, uh, be sure and be aware of the volume of the music that you're playing. You don't want the music to drown out what you're trying to say or what you're trying to record. Next, use the rule of thirds. On my camera screen, my, uh, my screen is divided into three sections. It has grid lines. It has two white lines, uh, again, dividing uh, the screen horizontally. And then there's two vertical lines that run across the middle of the screen. And uh, it divides it into three sections uh, horizontally. So make sure that what you're recording is in the intersection between uh, those three squares. Now, if you're recording yourself, then put yourself in the middle of the screen. Next, create a depth of field. Pick out a subject, like a tree or a bird or a mountain or a lake or whatever, and uh, try to include a foreground and a background and record those things while you're recording the subject. Again, it will create a depth of field where you know how far the mountain is or how far the subject is and also how close it is uh, because of the foreground. For example, sometimes when I'm recording a walk by, I will set my camera up so that it's recording perhaps maybe a flower or a bush uh, that's close by. And then also there will be a mountain or something uh, in the background. And then I'll record myself walking through the shot. Again, giving a foreground and then the subject, me walking uh, through and then the mountain in the background. And so create a depth of field. Next, have a dominant subject. Don't just start videotaping uh, everything and, uh, and just random shots everywhere. Uh, make sure that you uh, pick out a particular dominant subject and then record that, that subject. I've seen people try to record a whole landscape, you know, 360 degrees around them. I'll just pick up, a, pick out a small section of that landscape and then take a uh, five, six second recording of that uh, land, of that particular landscape, and then move on to another uh, landscape. But uh, make sure that you have a dominant subject. Next, don't make the clips too long. I'm not talking about the entire video, but I'm talking about uh, the different shots that you take. Don't make them real long. Nobody wants to see 20 minutes of you walking down the trail. I've seen people record 20 minutes of time lapse on the trail. People get tired of that, watching that after a little while. So make sure that your clips are between, I would say, four seconds and seven or eight seconds at the most. Again, I'd rather see several short clips than one real long clip. And so make sure that your clips are short. One of the best things that I learned was this. Watch good trail videos. If something is interesting to you, it's gonna be interesting to your audience as well. And so make sure that uh, you like the particular uh, video that you're watching and then break it down, analyze it. Why is it interesting to me? What kind of techniques are they using? Uh, but uh, find out 
what other people do and uh, copy them. <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. And so I'm sure they got that technique from somebody else who got it from somebody else who got it from somebody else. And so find out what they did to uh, make their videos interesting and then uh, use the same techniques that they do. Next. Create movement in your shot. Don't just take a picture of a landscape or don't don't video a land, just video a landscape, uh, but move the camera. Uh, perhaps maybe put the lake or the mountain or whatever, put it in the lower left-hand corner and then uh, record the mountain or the, the scene uh, moving to the upper right-hand corner. But create movement in your, uh, in your video. Now, if there's movement in the scene or the scenery, uh, then keep your camera still. For example, on walk-bys, uh, you're recording uh, movement, you're recording a person or yourself moving uh, through the scene. And so uh, set it up on a tripod so that it's stationary and it will record movement in, in the scene. But people, people get tired of just seeing a stationary object for any length of time. And so uh, create movement. This is a bonus tip but keep multiple copies of your recording. The last thing you wanna do is to accidentally delete <laughs> a long distance hike. And so uh, post it to uh, whatever social media that you're using. And also make sure that you keep, it, uh, keep a copy of it on uh, an external hard drive. Make sure it's on your camera. Make sure that uh, it's uh, stored on your computer, but make sure that you keep multiple copies of this recording, because again, you do not want to accidentally uh, delete it and then have no recording, no uh, copy of this long trip that you took. I want to emphasize that these are things that I learned. Uh, I didn't know them overnight. I didn't get to become a professional photographer, videographer overnight. I had to learn and I learned by trial and error. And so will you. And so just get out there, record your hike, and then try to improve on it the next time. Now, I hope these tips were helpful. And uh, if they were, then leave me a comment down below and uh, share it with someone else. Share this video with someone else and uh, give it a thumbs up and I appreciate it so much. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, be sure and do so. And so until then, I will see